Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from Boo Nation Counseling Service here today to present the new moon of October 6th, 2021. So first of all, I want to talk about uh, what's going on with just the planets. And we'll do so by looking at Jana software. I am using the place of Washington, D.C., but I want to try to read the chart as I always do so that it has meaning for you regardless of where you are in the world. So we'll start with Janice. We'll go through some of the very interesting aspects that are going to be going on at that time. And then we'll jump into solar fire where we will look at the asteroids and we're going to look at the dial. So again, it'll have meaning for everyone who looks at it, particularly when we look at the Aries point. With that said, before I jump into the charts, I want to say thank you for watching the video. And if you are a subscriber, a bigger thank you. And then again, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider becoming one. But if you would, in the meantime, please like, share, and comment. I'd really love to hear from you. It's always good to have someone else's perspective of what's going on in the skies. So, as I said, we're going to be looking at a chart for Washington, D.C. It has a Libra rising, so the, the chart, at least for that area, is ruled by Venus. We're also going to notice immediately that there is a stellium, a big grouping of planets that all come together in this chart. So depending on where you live in the world would determine what house that fell into. So we're going to have a look at that. So let's step inside here and look at what Janice has to show us. So here we have the Janice chart. And as always, I've kept it pretty simple. I did keep the Trans-Neptunians in there. Chiron is still there. But isn't this an interesting chart? First of all, look at the stellium over here. Now, in the DC chart, this is all in the first house. And in particular, this sun and this Mars would be still very much, and the moon, still much be affecting this ascendant of this chart. So it does look like there could be a great deal of activity that would be taking place in Washington, D.C. over the next several weeks. Well, I don't want to talk about that as much as I want to talk about how these three are all in conjunct Uranus. And what does that mean? Okay. So we're going to start off by just talking about how the moon is our emotions. The sun is what drives us. It's our days, whereas moons are hours, days. And then we have our drive, our energy, all together, all sitting together, okay? Which means that emotionally we're going to be driven to action or we're going to be reactive when it comes to our emotional selves. With the sun there, we also know that our physical body and our lives in general are going to be affected not only by our moon, our emotions, but also by the actions that we will seem to be compelled because of the conjunction to make. We do have a lot of energy with Mars conjuncting both the sun and the moon. So that is actually not a bad thing, and we can use that well if we're wise. However, in conjuncts do create what I like to refer to as difficulties. It's not the same as the amount of energy that's generated in a square. It's more of an uncomfortable or a discomfort. What is causing the discomfort? Uranus. Uranus represents our friends, our associates, and our need for freedom. The problem is, is that 
we're going to get really hung up with friends and associates because that is a perfect in conjunct. And it means that sometimes other people are going to be able to manipulate us to do their bidding, if you will. And we might do it because our need for approval is going to be really strong. And because we need to find approval, we're going to be more vulnerable to other people taking advantage of us over the next several weeks. Now, we could look at this like a government, and we can look at this as DC. And if we looked at this as DC, it, it is the actions of the people. And if you notice, the house that Uranus is sitting in is what we would call combined resources or the government money, so to speak, all of the money tied together. And what are our associates, the country's associates, what's happening because of those resources? Well, interestingly enough, we're not even there yet. We could already be talking about the submarine incident with France. But we could also be talking about the fact that the United States is now going to be responsible for sending out a lot of vaccinations to other countries, to our allies, if you will, our friends. But it's also telling us that these people are not going to act in a predictable manner. And this is going to leave us all open to being vulnerable to seeking the approval of other people. That's how things like the big lie has perpetrated throughout the Republican Party and how that has been a deficit to the true Republican movement. Again, just throwing stuff out there because it's easy to say, well, it would be sort of like this. So look for more of the same if you happen to live in the United States. If you don't, look for what house is affected where you live and how is it that friends and associates are going to cause disruption in our routines through their unpredictable behaviors and unpredictable requests. I also want to point out that all of this, though it's quite wide, is making a nice trine to Jupiter, which actually makes it all so pleasant. And you know what's interesting about this? It just makes us even more vulnerable because we're all going to be in such great moods that when we're caught off guard and we are taken advantage of, we will not take it well. We will become very angry. There's that Mars. We'll become very, very angry over that. Now, Jupiter is also healing. And I do believe in the fifth house, one of the things that is healing with the DC area is our ability to express ourselves. Now, it is retrograde. But there is a little bit of room here for healing. Now, Realize that Jupiter is in Aquarius in the Leo house. So it's not going to be real strong. It's also retrograde. So we have to bear that in mind. But it does give us a little bit more energy. It does make us a little bit more pleasant and easier to deal with. And it does make us a little bit happier. So it's not all bad. Now, as we look at the in conjunct from Mercury, which is also in all of this mess, to the in conjunct to Neptune, we are looking at how, again, we can feel obligated to other people because now in this case, through compassion, through our empathy, because Neptune to Mercury, does make us a little bit more intuitive and it gives us a lot of we're so receptive and you're just picking up everything but that also makes us more vulnerable 
to being taken advantage of. So you always have to go back to that original configuration and you really want to be mindful of that. I'm just going to grab my pen here. So here we are back here and I have my pen and I just wanted to note a few things. First of all, the incredible opposition. Now it's not marked because Chiron isn't marked out in this and you'll notice there's nothing to Volcanus or Hades, but yet they're highly involved in a lot of this too. First of all, let's look at this. You have all of this at 13 degrees because look at this. Okay, so what's running in the middle here is the uh, midheaven, but Look at how Hades and Cronus straddle that midheaven and how each of them then squares, and in this case, it squares all of this. As a matter of fact, Mercury's in there as well. And there's this tremendous amount of squares. And one of the things that I find really discour dis dis uh, not discouraging, but let's just say that it's, dis it's disconcerting is the fact that Hades Kronos could be talking about medical issues. And I am going to, by the way, I have it written down. When we get to the asteroids, I am going to talk about the vaccinations again. I haven't done it for a few months. I got a lot of bunch of new subscribers, so maybe more people will be able to see this. But I'm going to actually put the vaccinations back in the chart again so that we can see how we're doing with the pandemic through the vaccinations. But in this particular case, what we're looking at is a, I want to say a T-square, because we have an opposition here to a square here. That's how the T-square is formed, okay? And that's not even considering um, anything that's down here yet. I'm, I'm not going to have to do that until we get to the asteroid. But if you look at this, you have to realize that we are learning a lot right here about ourselves as people. This is a great time of growth, by the way. And the other thing I, want, I do want to talk about is how Venus rules this chart. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But here, look at this turning point. I believe that our actions and our emotions and the way that we're driven is leading us to what will be turning points in our lives. And one of the reasons why is because of this right here, credibility. And it's going to have a lot to do with credibility. Is something credible? Is it not credible? And that's going to apply to authority figures. And again, it will not matter where you are. In Washington, D.C., it may be about the president or it could be about other members of Congress. Okay? But the turning point's happening because we're learning things, okay? And you know why I know we're learning things? Because all of this in the DC chart is moved into the first house. With all of, let me just make sure I got it right. Yeah, all of the things I have circled being affected by that ascendant. That means news we're getting. That means action that we're taking. It also means Somebody, and it could be authority figures, are going to get angry and that things will happen as a result of their anger. Okay. Are they going to be allowed to be effective? Well, I think it really depends because all of this is in opposition to Chiron, which is our turning points. Chiron is also about people who do not think the rules apply to them. How is it so much of that has an effect not only on the, the midheaven of the United States chart, but also involves Kronos and Hades and directly reflects back to the people? Look for that, especially in the United States. But even if you're not in the United States, this is still going to apply. I don't care if you're in Australia. You're going to have a, pit, a problem with the people in authority as you're trying to deal with turning points. And I think we already know that's true. And I don't think it matters 
what country you're in that you can honestly say that that is not being reflected in this particular work. So the new moon, which is taking place at 13 degrees of Lib Libra, is ruled by Venus. Venus happens to be in Scorpio. Not the best place for it. Okay? It would do much better if it were in its opposing sign of Taurus. It's also very late in Venus, which is referring to oftentimes ends of cycles or the ending ways of doing things. It happens to fall in the second house. It happens to be telling us that there is something related to money, our value, our value system, and our worth. But think about things not just like money, because we're talking here transformative Pluto. That's the energy that's running Venus right now. So that's telling us that, that's the first thing telling us, that we're looking at something like morals and ethics. And then you have South Node running right with it, which means it's going to be difficult to make money, particularly in the old way, so it really has to do a lot with thinking outside the box again. It also has to do with the fact that even relationships are altering and changing and transforming. And that maybe what you were getting, the value that you were getting, you're not getting in a specific relationship. And, you know, it's really funny because with all this other stuff going on, and I do make a mess of these charts, this Venus is definitely now you've got a sextile with that poseidon in there and in scorpio and even with uh business itself or apollon our ability to expand we are going to be able to expand more we are healing but we're healing in a way that's retrograde the healing is taking place more inside of us and i think it's going to create a different value system because one of the issues that many many people have with authority figures right now doesn't always deal with money and sometimes it deals with morality and ethics and the lack thereof and this is what's causing the turning point people who don't think the rules apply to them well because maybe they're rich and everyone knows that there's a different law for rich people than poor people and i'm saying that very sarcastic because it's something that we have been living with, but I don't think people are going to be as accepting of it as we go into the new age where equity is the biggest factor. And I think that that is what we're looking at. I think one of the things that I've heard recently that I feel really applies here is the fact that when that woman went missing, Gabby was her name, All these people are armchair sleuths. Everybody wants to know, following the press, whatever. But did you know that an Asian woman was also missing under the same kind of circumstances? But nobody's really talked about her. Or there was a black gentleman who is also missing. Ironically, I think the Asian woman was also missing in Wyoming. It's just so bizarre that there is no attention paid to people who are not white. Yet no one ever really noticed that until now. Now we've noticed. Now we have the opportunity to change it. Because you can't, you can't fix a problem until you know it exists. So I think that that's what's going on in the big picture. That things that maybe were gotten away with, and this doesn't matter where you live or who you are, what company you work for, or anything. I feel that there is an awakening that's happening with regards to things like equity and that we really are starting to look at things differently because just because somebody's an authority, this is also authorities that are, now it could be doctors and it could be doctors with turning points and I'll get to that in a minute, but 
I think it relates also to the fact that people think they don't have to follow the same rules as the rest of us. And I think that that's what we're going to be discovering through the Chiron transition. And even though Chiron is re retrograde, it only means that that would be more like external situations that are being internally viewed. So it's more, it's more about looking at them through our own inside eyes and how that's how everything will change. We change, we ascend, we get better, we evolve. Then everything else is forced to. And that's what you see in this chart. It's absolutely incredible. But I want to keep moving. So I want to next look at solar fire. This one really tells you when it's up. Okay, so here we've got the asteroids listed. Okay, now I want to talk about this because this is really, really important. This is telling us that there will be a continued struggle for a woman's rights to her own body. And that's how I'm going to put it because that's exactly how I see it. Okay? And, and don't tell me... A, Really, you don't even want to get into why with me. <laughs> but here, you see this Chiron, which is definitely on the Ascendant. These are turning points that are being pushed on us, if you will. And how do I know that they're being pushed on? Because look at the trine that's going on with Volcanus, adding pressure to Chiron. All right? What are they trying to do? Look at this. Gender issues decisions, but they're related to gender issues, related to birth and death. What kills me is the pro-life places don't have any issues with gun control, nor do they have any issues with putting you to death if you're on death row. So where is the pro-life? I, I, I fail to see that. So it kind of doesn't diminishes their argument in someone like my case. Okay. I would look at it and go, oh, it makes no sense to me. And I do do that. But here, let's look at that. So you have this combination. And so one of the things, and look at this. Okay. Remember, this is still here, but I like this. Look at this. Doo-doo. Doo-doo is doo-doo. Crap. <laughs> okay. And we got crap conjuncting, it's a little far, far from Hades, but it's definitely not that far from Kronos. Look at the crap we're putting up with, particularly as women. Wow. Sometimes I can't get over how accurate charts can be. So here we see that things are getting worse. And that there's a lot of gloom and doom because of this. But you know what's really interesting here is that right here. It's at 13 degrees of Libra, which means it conjuncts the sun, the moon, and Mars. Suicide. Okay. So, no, it doesn't mean everybody's going to commit suicide. Does it mean there may be higher rates in suicide? Yeah, it's possible. I'm not going to go there. I don't. I'm not a stats person, but is it possible? Mm, I can tell you what it is possible. It's called self-destructive actions. And I can tell you that the sun, the moon, and the Mars, and I was trying to prep you for that when I said that when you're dealing with in conjuncts, there's such a need to be appreciated that it makes us vulnerable to take being taken advantage of by other people. Okay? Now realize that some red state leaders are going to think that they are going to appease their base. I just don't think they realize that their base isn't that big. Not for certain factors, I don't. And I think that they could be blowing it. Look at this. It's getting worse, it says. Melpomene. That means it's getting worse, okay? Now, melpomene also refers to the virus getting worse. Because when I first started studying medical astrology, melpomene is something 
that does tell you that an illness is getting worse. A pathology. That's the word my teacher uses. Anyone interested? Her name is Martha Lang Westcott. She's still a very active medical astrologer and has her own website. But in any event, she, I still work in it as well, but I, I definitely have to admit that she is just the most brilliant person ever. And here we've got malcolming and we've got self-destructive actions. Every parent who shows up at a school board meeting not wearing a mask is self-destructive. But what's so amazing is they don't feel like the rules apply to them. They're making their own decisions, which ultimately could lead to death. Or at least sickness. So it's so mind-blowing. This is why I study astrology. My fondness for astrology is because when I look at a chart and it reads like a book, which is what our new moon does, it, it's just, it's, it's so amazing to me. So amazing. Now, the last thing I want to talk about up here is all of this is running with this midheaven. Okay. This is parents. This is moms. This is parent-child things. Look what's running with it. Pain level. Look at this over here. Self-destructive actions. Because we don't think the rules apply to us. Really? I mean, how clear can we get? Every time I think, I, every time uh, my significant other, he reads his news in the newspaper, I actually do my news online um, by, by Google. It's, I'm still reading news, but I'm not reading some Facebook page, believe me. But um, he always is reading me stories about how uh, we have really good mask mandates around us because I live in Pennsylvania and we have a mask mandate for schools, which I am so proud of our governor for making sure we have that. But we still have parents showing up or kids showing up without masks and they are sent home. They need to learn remotely then. If you don't want to wear a mask, it's very simple. It's an option. But I think it's amazing. They don't realize they're self-destructive. They're adding to a sense of gloom and doom. Atlantis. They feel like they're, now if I were to look at it from their side, because you can with astrology, they might feel that their privacy is being invaded or that it has something to do with their privacy. But you can't take Aragon out of there, which is that asteroid that looks a little bit like the Sun of Pisces. That is self-destructive actions. And that's what we're seeing. But you know what else? For those of you who don't live in the United States, if you start doing things for other people, you are setting yourself up for self-destructive action as well, especially if those are people who are authority figures and particularly authority figures that are not really good anyway. The only people that could be up there in this combination that wouldn't be having a bad connotation would be a doctor. And I'm, you know, they're not infallible. But we are who don't want to follow their advice. So we come down here. And in this particular um, arena, we see things like excitement to take risks. And then you have this big thing about pets and animals, but it could also be being hounded. And I tell you this, there are people that are being hounded by people who don't think the rules apply to them, that feel like they're in self-destructive positions that are only getting worse and have been an infringement on their privacy and have caused them to feel a sense of gloom and doom. So it is amazing when you start putting this all together. I do like that Pluto is down here. I didn't talk a lot about it. Um, but Pluto is only opposite, which is transformations, okay? It also means that it's out of our control. And we do have 
we have an ex-president that we have to deal with in this country. And the beauty is, is that I think that's beginning to change. And this is not something that would necessarily be in effect, say, if you were in Australia. I keep using Australia because it's the other side of the world to us. But I, I do like to point out that if you're living anywhere in Europe, South America, you're not going to have the same chart. You're going to have all the same aspects. They're just going to look different because they're going to be angled differently. Pluto would not be in opposition to those things. Being hounded would be because of the, of the degree point. Being hounded, absolutely. Pressure because of associates, yeah, because you're still dealing with a, a volcanus. Uh, 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 opposite a Cupido, associates, family members, and everybody's putting pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay, so we have that, but the transformations that I'm seeing are occurring in the United States. And you know what it's really nice is? Things are beginning to happen to the ex-president where he is beginning to realize he doesn't have control over things. And sometimes for some people that's really tough. So look out for that, because it doesn't always have to apply to the government. It can also apply to you, and that's what you want to bear in mind. So I am actually now going to move past DC. The first thing I want to do with this is, the first thing we need to do is look at the Aries point. And it just so happens, and then I'm going to do the um, asteroids for the virus as well, so which I'm going to have to go back with this. So let me go grab exactly where they are. I have some of the asteroids. I don't have them all. So let me go grab them. Okay, so I'm back, and um, I have all my asteroids here. And I first of all, I want to point out, um, my teacher uh, did this for the ingress chart, which is, uh, I believe, September 22nd, We which would be about a week or so ago from this chart. So she did an ingress chart and she used the virus. And she pointed out that even though we don't use Bernard, Bernhard for, because it's actually a pneumonia back, vaccination, it's used in England, they don't use it anymore. But I, she put it on there, now I understand why. There's actually a, a grand trine between three of these. So we can talk about that. Um, and actually, you know what, let's look at it on a wheel just to get a, a better idea. So there, it's a grand trine. So there's going to be at nine degrees, which would be right in here, which would be on the IC of the new moon chart. There is, that's where Bernhard is, which is the pneumonia vaccination. She still kept it in there because it completed the grand cross. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the grand trine. So we had that there. Then at nine degrees of Taurus, right, literally right on the cusp of the eighth house, we have Francis, which again is no surprise that the United States is giving vaccinations to other countries. So that's really, really cool. Okay. Then we have at eight degrees of Virgo. So we have the Grand Trine with the Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So at, in Virgo, we have another one right here with dependencies. Um, in other words, uh, it's interesting. It's the 11th house, which is associates, uh, associations with others. Uh, it's also about goals. And it has a thing where you're, there's a dependent. People are dependent on something else for it. And that, is the, that makes a grand trine. Okay, it happens to be in the, so we have one in the 8th, 11th, and the 4th houses, okay? So it's really interesting um, in D.C. that that would be there. Now, the other two, because there's four for the vaccination, for, the, for what we're dealing with. So we have two more. We have Mather at 18 degrees of Pisces, which would be right here in the 5th house. And we have Pastor, which is our last and final one in the Leo, so it would be up here. Actually, it falls in the 11th house as well with academia. So it actually is making a conjunction to academia. So there's a, a lot we're still learning. And it's interesting because academia on this chart is running with Bacchus, which is a narcotic, a drug. 
It can mean abuse of drugs, but it's also about learning, in this case, about drugs. And so you have that as a factor with our vaccinations, okay? So I thought that was really, really cool, and I wanted to go through it. I like the fact that three of them, even though one wasn't, is, is actually related to pneumonia, it's still lung related, and it formed a grand trine. And to me, uh, it means that these uh, are able to work easily, not just in terms of the easily in the world, but also easily within each other, okay? So that they are doing their job. The fact that two of these asteroids happen to fall in the 11th house, which is also the house of goals, means that we might be getting more people in this country vaccinated, which would be a good thing. We have a real issue with that here. So um, that actually bodes well for this whole thing. So let me go back to my dial and we'll continue with what we were going to be looking at. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two things here. I want to talk about the Aries point, but I also want to talk about the sun moon axis point, which occurs at 13 degrees of Libra, actually about 13 and a half to be exact. So we're going to look at both. We're going to start by looking at the Aries point because this is how the new moon chart is going to affect the whole world. Okay, so let's start by looking at this. Now, I am going to add in asteroids that are not listed, but I always like to look at what's really obvious, okay? So, for example, you know, you still, oops, I did not, I didn't move my dial first. Okay, so I have to take this off. There we go. And I have to bring this down because this is where the excitement is. Okay, so you start with this equatorial ascendant, okay, and you've got Zeus in here, you've got, Mars, um, I'm sorry, not Mars, Mercury, excuse me. I make a lot of mistakes when I'm talking. But Mercury is still out by, I'm going to say less than two degrees, but you could count it as in. And the only reason why I wanted to look at it, because I feel like this is really important. This right here is an asteroid called Ophelia. And it's not real far from the nodes, okay, which are right there. Okay, so you've got Ophelia and you've got the nodes. Ophelia is overreactions. And one of the things I feel like is happening uh, a lot is people overreacting. And, and one of the things I try to remind people is the people who are overreacting or have the big mouths are not the majority of people. But it is a few connections. And that's what this is talking about. But it does refer to the fact that people are behaving in a way that may be overreacting in this next month, particularly as it relates to Virgo, which would be health, well-being, things that we do to keep ourselves well and healthy, and things that deal with our day-to-day -day routine. So we've got that. You know, Zeus is not far from that. We also have that um, Hecate is there, which is also talking about how these new turning points they're trying to make with the uh, woman's right to her own body, I think they've overstepped. And I think that that's also being addressed here. So that's really interesting. And I do believe that's more of a world because outside of D.C., if you're on the other side of the country, you're not going to be affected in the same way. But yet that is still an issue. The other thing is with all of this violence and, I, and, and excitement and craziness because you know Zeus isn't just getting excited about something and then trying to restrain it until you you know or starting something new and then trying to keep the enthusiasm up through the whole time it's also guns explosions and things that are also not so nice and it is equaling EOS which means that we might around the sixth experience some issues that will cause chaos I don't think it'll be devastating, but I am very concerned about the Women's March. I'm actually doing this video before the Women's March. I will not be producing it until after, but I do, I can tell you that doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. So as we, um, and also just look at this, how people just don't feel like they need to follow the rules. Chiron is there again. Okay. 
So it's just really interesting when you look at this and how people just want to hold on to the past. You can't do that when you've grown into a new age. And that's what we're dealing with is a new age. As of December of last year, we're in a new age. I think we have to get some people to catch up here. So that's going to be still in there. And how people enable other people is in there. But the other thing that I really wanted to point out that really, really is in there is surprises. And when something happens, it will be more than one. More than one surprise. More than one solution. Surprises will not always be for the good. Okay? So you have to bear that in mind. Especially not with the Hades Volcanus there. There's really a lot of pressure. And the pressure might be coming from the disease from the virus itself. In other words, the fact that it's out there. So it, it's just amazing. Again, I love when charts are accurate. We have astraea up here. And astraea means that we're seeing things that are quite confusing to us. There's that chaos. This is chaos for me. But it's also right in the Aries point, and it's between withdrawing and chaos. So when things get too, when you can't bear to see anymore, I don't care where you are in the world, it's because the destruction has to happen in order to reconstruct. And a lot of times, it's the destruction process that's quite scary. And we are going through that right now. So the um, down here, we have all the usual suspects. Helping others, particularly getting and giving help with regards to an illness, which is, is right there, I believe is also about us sending shots out into other countries and really helping them out. Um, I also feel that help is going to be used as a vehicle next month. You got to help me. So watch out for being trapped into helping somebody. Watch for those situations where you've just allowed yourself to be a patsy. At the very beginning of this video, I talked extensively about those inconjuncts. That's what happens with an inconjunct. Okay? So be aware of that. We have to have good boundaries this month. The other thing we're going to hear a lot about, and this is unfortunate, is death. We're not done dying. Okay? Just, we're not done dying. And I think it is from the disease because it's not resolved. So even though we're in October, and I do think we're going to start, shut, it's going to start getting a little bit better, people are still dying. Okay? I think the real prediction for when this uh, starts to go away will not be until February of next year. So we still have months to go. Okay? And obviously people to get vaccinated. So, now as I talk about um, those uh, asteroids that were related to the illness, here we go, I do want to talk about yep, right here. See how we have partners here at 18 degrees? And see how it equals, I believe that's the vertexual ascendant. Yes, it is. Um, that is, and you notice how it's an Achilles heel. I think because we kind of screwed up a little bit, this country, yeah, we're being pressured to be partners in something that it's kind of an Achilles heel, but I also feel that that's going to be what makes it so that we really have to get these vaccinations out. Because, you know, we screwed up a little so that is uh, in the astrology as well. That's a vaccination, the vaccination, we're partnering, there's partners related to it, one-to-one, -one, excellent. The other ones, uh, this one comes with, it's very serious. I believe this is, this is another, this is the education. Remember I said one runs with education. It's right here. So if you were to put it right there, and then see what it equals. Well, the irony is, is it equals uh, Hades. And there we have it. Hades, the ascendant. So it equals a lot, okay? And it is about the vaccination, all right? And getting people to become vaccinated. It's also, I believe, very, let me see, there it is. No, it's 12. I gotta go to 13. There we go. That's the other really big hotspot. And what I wanted to show was it's not very far away. 
But what I did want to show you, it's funny, the sun is actually at one point running with narcissists. I actually wrote about it in my daily astrology. And that means that people can be very self-contained, selfish, self-centered, all the above. And in the sun axis, we have Venus. Now, that's actually good, too, you know, for compliments and things like that. But it does make us all selfish, again. It just kind of reiterates what I had already said about asteroids being reiterated then through planets. Okay, and I do believe that that is one of the hottest items that we have going on. And I don't know if that's an issue everywhere in the world, and it might very well be. But I know we have an epidemic of that here in this country. The entitled, you know, I just I can't get over it sometimes. So this makes this all part of the sun axis, which was the second thing that I did want to look at. Okay. So I am going to write this down so I have all these numbers. So we're looking at 1330 Cardinal. We're going to also be looking at uh, 2830 fixed, which means we're going to be looking at six degrees of fixed as well, which would be right here. This is the sun. Oh, Pluto. Do you see it? There it is. Look at that. Speaking out and speaking up. People just don't know if they should do that. You know, I have to be honest with you. I've actually been avoiding people rather than dealing with them. Wow. That's in astrology. Are we all doing that? Are we doing that because we don't know how other people are taking this illness or reacting to it? How? interesting that is so absolutely amazing wow so we're going to look at some asteroids and i'm going to come back to you for that there isn't a lot to add on i do want to point out but i do want to come back to you because these asteroids won't be on here i got i've got a lot that are but these are not so i'm going to come back to you so I'm back and I've got my list and I want to get through it really quickly because the video is so far I'm doing okay with time. It's an amazing thing, but I'm, I won't if I keep going. A couple of things I want to point out in this that EOS, as I've already pointed out, is that chaotic, crazy, scattered energy type of an asteroid. And it is definitely in the Aries point. So please note that you will be expecting some degree of chaos everywhere no matter who you are or where you are in the world but along with that uh, chaos which was the uh, first thing that that really came up here i also want to point out that crone which is an asteroid we already looked at crone or chronos which is the trans neptunian but crone the asteroid is running with eos and that means that some of our confusion is going to come as a result of authority figures so, you know, it could be things you're hearing from a doctor. And it's really interesting because we are in the middle of a pandemic. We're coming to the end of a pandemic. But that pandemic is, we're, we're playing it as we go. We really don't know any other way to handle it. So I don't blame the doctors. But realize that this could happen at your work. You know, I just heard of people saying they were going back to the office. Now they're not going back to the office. Now they're going back to the office. It's just hilarious. Okay. So then... As I go down my list here, um, I do want to point out that, no, I did want to talk about Malit, but Malit is actually not. It's about, it's out of the sun axis by a little bit more than a degree. Um, I should talk about it because it does mean that a lot of us are going to be doing a lot of wondering, a lot of, you know, considering, contemplating. There's a lot of that going on, and I did want to talk about that. And the reason why, because in the Aries point, we've got a volcano, which means that there's a lot of pressure on all of us right now, no matter where you are or where you live in the world. There's just a lot of pressure right now for a lot of people. And one of the things that comes up here is, remember I talked to you about, you know, getting and giving help. Well, one of the things that showed up from the sun axis is the idea of Duke. And what that means is, is that it could be situations where people are giving money to things. And we have been hearing about that already. So Duke, think of a Duke, 
Okay, it's also associated, ironically, with smoking. Okay, but and maybe somebody's being pressured to quit smoking, and that's very, very possible. And also, very likely, if somebody is a cigarette smoker with this virus going on. But I also use Duke as people who think they are better than other people, and oftentimes it is associated with the very wealthy. Okay. So as I move on, and I will, we have, hold on, I lost my numbers again. Oh, here we are. Okay, so we have here um, the idea of people who enable other people, but mostly we have the idea that some people are really, really clever with the truth. And they have a way of getting to the truth and then allowing the consequences of that truth to fall on the shoulders of other people. We have an ex-president doing that right now. How interesting. It does mean, however, that no matter where you are in the world, look out for that. It's also talking, as I go down, I think it's at yeah, 21, we're also talking about people who talk incessantly. I always laugh when I hear this because I actually have this asteroid on my Mercury. So I'm always thinking and I'm always talking, which is why these videos get too long. So then we're looking. Okay, so watch out for people who talk incessantly. You know, I heard a senator talk recently and everything he said was not true. And the interesting thing is Heather Cox Richardson has actually named this person because they do this. Not only was it not true, they were transposing it. They were like making to blame when they were to blame. Oh, I just, it was bizarre land, but it's Wall Street. So look for that, guys. Look for those bad leaders and how they use language. It's called gaslighting. Okay. So, so we get back to the Aries points. So I'm going both at the same time. And here I'm going to tell you that the idea is that we are in the process of reconstruction. And what that means is, is that first we have to tear things down and in order to rebuild them. And during this time, it's a lot of people are withdrawing. I'm one of the people. I'm, I'm not very much out in public, although I'm not really a public person. I really am a hermit in, in the absolute sense. But I think that uh, there are a lot of people right now that are hermiting, even people that it's not na natural to who they are. It's also talking about 1330. Oh, this is the one. This is where we see the Aragon, the sun. And you know what? This is really interesting. Rosetta. How the truth will be like to set you free. It's like, whoa. It's going to be like a truth that opens up your eyes and it's sitting there and it is going to relate to a disease that is getting worse. Okay. Remember I said more people will die and then we see Mars. Yep. Oh my God. I can't believe that Rosetta is falling with the sun and the moon. So there's going to be a lot of truth that comes out this month. A lot of truth, whether or not people want to deal with it. That's a whole other matter. But you can't have Rosetta sitting with the sun and not think that our days are not going to be filled with truths. They are. And I think some of us will be ascending because of that truth. I think that truth will be aha moments and, and moments of ascension. So, so I go on and I see, oh yeah, and we're going to be surprised. And we're going to be surprised. And remember I said not all of those surprises will be good. And let me just finish this up. We have uh, six. There we go. Be weary because some people need to be beaten up. They, it's almost like they can't function if they're not treated badly. It's kind of bizarre. Um, it, you know what it is, too? It's almost like they're afraid to speak out because if they speak out, they're afraid they're going to get beat up on. Well, I can relate to that. I feel that way a lot, especially right now. It's also talking about how there's going to be lies associated with an illness, but it's about something that's ornamental, some kind of lie, but it's ornamental. Doesn't mean as much. Telling you what I'm seeing. Then as I get back into mutables, 
I am all the way down here. Yeah, watch out for people who smile. Remember I told you about the politician lying right from his, I was like, what? I think they think people are stupid, but watch for that. Watch for, you know, and also the people that beat up on you if you do tell the truth. Um, it, it just, we're really dealing with some, what did I say in the very big, well, about the middle of this, people who are overreactive. Boy, that is such a harsh truth. It's unbelievable. Okay. So, in, so it's telling us that not only do we have uh, businesses associated with a sickness that we want to look at, but also the fact that um, in order to get people to do business, you have to be nice. You really have to be nice. And then Varda is running with Smiley a little bit out, though. But that's another truth. How much truth are we going to be getting this month? It is amazing. Know that, as I said, when I did the chart, a lot of this will not be resolved easily and people will be amazed at what they're seeing. Okay. It also is telling us from this chart that you have to, again, be aware of people that are codependent or that are going along with it just because somebody else does. Okay. Um, so yeah, you really have to be careful of a lot of that this month. Um, it's also referring to, uh, Saturn is here too. It, it's referring to big money. And then it's also referring to restrictions and limitations and, uh, at the same time. So, or lessons that we're learning through big business, maybe big business is learning some really hardcore lessons, which wouldn't be too bad. Some of the stuff that's coming out though is just to tell you that things are getting a little bit worse and it's going to appear to be a little too little and a little too late for a lot of things. And I do feel that way about some of our climate change things. I think we really need to be more drastic there. Um, it is also referring to, here we go again. Yeah. How things are not clear that we're not getting clarity that Neptune is still mucking up the stuff here not just by the disease, but by the fact that it is difficult for some people to be honest, even though the truth is coming out everywhere. So I'm going to leave you here. And with that, I want to say, until we meet again, I wish you only happy readings. And thank you for watching this video.